guys, Danjix here, back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video. Exciting one today, we get to dive as deep as possible into the rides of Night City, at least until we get our hands on the actual game. In the video, I'll be going through the many types of vehicles, from economy to heavy duty, from sporty to executive, and finally, hypercars. Be sure to tell me below which is your ride in Cyberpunk 2077. Before we start, reminding you that I've given away a few copies of the game out already, so be sure to follow the link below if you want to win as well. I'll also be giving away my GTX 2080 Super at the start of November, so be sure to subscribe. You can always unsub later. So we start off with some framing shots of Night City's highways, and we can already see the variety of different vehicles on display. Remember, each vehicle is unique in how it looks, performs, handles, and sounds. Even vehicles of the same model can drive differently. For example, a sporty new looking Quadra Type T will be faster than a run down looking one, while a Nomad modified one will be faster still. The devs said if it looks cheap, it probably drives cheap. Every vehicle is unique from their interior to their quirks. Some may speak to you when you enter, literally, and others will feel like they're barely holding together. The sound team went crazy making each car sound realistic with over 40 vehicles recorded, including the Porsche 911 which will feature as Johnny Silverhand's old car in the game. Speaking of Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves has a motorbike company apparently and it played a part in putting their cyberpunk inspired motorbike in the game. So you've had a little glimpse of what kinds of vehicles exist within Cyberpunk 2077, but let's break down the types you can encounter and give examples from each. Economy are your lower end of the price range of vehicles, from cars to vans, getting you from A to B and not bound to attract a lot of attention. As Johnny says, definitely not a guy or girl magnet. So we have from left to right the Mackay Guy Mai Mai, a Thornton Colby, and an Archer Heller. Let's start with the Japanese made Mackay Guy Mai Mai. First off, it's tiny and can go where other cars can't because of its size, usually up ramps and sidewalks. Don't expect these to take a beating or do anything particularly well, but they are cheap. It's about entropism, which is necessity over style. In the trailer, they showed us three versions of the Mai Mai. One rundown sun bleach version, one in yellow and one in red. Expect the rundown version to be the absolute bottom of car quality. Just look at the sparks created here. The game is looking beautiful. Do note that the Mai Mai's only have a modest 70 horsepower, though they weigh next to nothing. The next brand is the USA made Thornton Colby. We see two versions, a dark green with luggage on the top and an orange without the luggage. The style is Kish. It's a popular countercultural movement against entropism, an expression of happiness and recovery in a period of relative excess, typified by bold colors, bright plastic and accessibility. The car has a low 102 horsepower, so once again, don't expect anything special from this car beyond getting where you need to go. Then we have the Chinese made Archer Hella. Their style is entropism as well, just like the Mai Mai, so it's about necessity. We only see one color here, but if we rewind back to the showcase, we see a blue as well. The Hella seems to be a more irregular sized car than the other two, but it has significantly more horsepower with 212. Here's another economy vehicle, but it's unclear what it's named. Just know it's taken some damage. Vehicle damage is in the game and taking too much will cause your ride to explode. Economy vehicles offer very little protection. Also, as you can see, economy models will also be fairly easy to hijack as they offer no security. Keep in mind that nomads can very well modify these economy vehicles into something that performs a lot better, but expect these to be the slowest of the Nomad model cars. Of course, we have a Mahia van, because what role-playing game would be complete without a vehicle that makes you look like a sex pest? Speaking of pests, you can always take them down in an NCPD patrol car. Expect these to be tougher and faster, 
than your typical workhorse. Then we have the executive branch of vehicles. These are higher end vehicles, but not quite the top. If you're after style over substance, these are your babies. First up is the USA built Ville Ford Alvarado. It's a Kish style car with 407 horsepower, just under double the Thornton Colby. We were teased the different versions of the car during the gang trailer, with gang modified versions like the one here. It turns out you can race this man win and get his ride, but you'll need to put up the money equal to its value. Street racing is possible in Night City and a good way to earn money or cars, but be sure to bring the right ride for the occasion. For example, a no man modified car for the Badlands races. That's because, well, they will just stick better in the sand. I digress, the Alvarado is luxurious and has six wheels because it's style over substance and why the heck not. We see models with both the roof up and down, but it's unclear if you can change this yourself. The next Villefort is the Quartz. It has less horsepower at 333, but it's also style over substance Kish. Then we have the USA built Chevillian Thrax. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these all correctly, but we don't have any reference. It uses the new neo-militarism style. That is to say, it has a sleek and domineering aesthetic power and a luxury for those who wear their appearance as a weapon of intimidation. The Thrax has 388 horsepower, so the Alvarado just beats it out there. They seem to come in different paint jobs, but I can't see any notable other versions of the Thrax in the trailer. Then we see the back of the Delamain, as well as a look at the Valentino branded Alvarado. Then we see the interior of one of the Villeforts. Here we see the 6th Street Combat Taxis. This thing is modified by the 6th Street Gang to keep passengers safe and comfortable as they get them to their destination. It's unclear if you can use their services too, or you can simply drive one yourself, but no doubt this version will absorb a lot of damage. Speaking of taking damage, next up are your heavy duty vehicles. Mostly trucks by Cow Kaz and mega corporations like Militech. The word tank is mentioned as well, but I think they mean the armored personnel carrier kind rather than the giant cannon variety. Though I wouldn't be surprised if CD Projekt Red added those in the game. First up is the Soviet Union built Cow Kaz Brask. It has 547 horsepower and 8,036 kilos of steel. We see three quite different versions, the first with a bucket, the second with a heavy duty bull bar, and the third carrying a shipping container which looks dwarfed on it. While hijacking one, you can see the interior. This is definitely substance over style at its finest. Then we have the more nippy cow Kaz, the Zaya. Embracing neo-militarism, this truck has a lacking 165 horsepower, but like the Brask, this truck can be found carrying different loads. These two both seem like biohazards. I wonder if that means this vehicle, if destroyed, will be particularly dangerous. Seeing the truck without a load makes it look quite cute actually, look at the little guy. Then we see a Nomad modified heavy duty vehicle. Not sure what this model is, but like all Nomad cars, expect those mods to give increased performance and durability. Also, look at that bunny in the front, he's clearly hiding something. Then we have the USA based Megacorp vehicle, the Militech Behemoth. Behemoth is right, at 9,202 kilos and 515 horsepower, don't expect much to stand in your way including cars and of course people. Just look at the physics as one drives over a poor economy car. So we have our desert military decaled version, a more sleek white and finally an Arasaka branded one. Which is interesting because Arasaka and Militech hate each other. But Hey, use their vehicles, why not? These neo-militaristic style trucks are expected to be slow, clunky, but extremely durable as they're made for the military. Even the interior seems sleek. Then we have the sporty vehicles. The ones I bet plenty of you will gravitate towards, especially when it comes to street races, until you get access to hypercars that is. Expect these to go fast, handle well, but not take a ton of damage. The first up is the USA built Quadra Type 66. This Kish style vehicle is a huge 666 horsepower. <laughs> Maybe it's an omen because like my dating history, there's a hell of a lot of sixes involved. This is a car for speed and it's good old American muscle, which reminds me of the Mustang. 
we see a sport paint job, white with a stripe, blue, and a sweet Nomad tricked out version. Now, I don't know a lot about cars, but a low profile tire doesn't seem well suited to off-road driving. Expect this car to sound like an absolute monster. Then we have the Japanese built Mizutani Shion. This is a lightweight 320 horsepower Kish styled vehicle. Expect this to sound like your typical Japanese sports car. Be fast off the line and easy to handle. I like how the interior seems to lock you in as to say, you're in for a ride. So we have the Nomad modified version with a wing and a baby blue paint job version. Then we have the flagship cyberpunk vehicle, the Quadra Turbo R. This sexy beast has 602 horsepower in a lighter body than a Type 66. This car seems to be in between the 66 and the Xion in terms of speed, acceleration and handling, and we already know there will be a ton of different versions of this car, with Jackie's being one of them. But here we see a Tiger Claw modified version, suggesting possible gang versions around Night City. Here we see a car called the Avenger, which looks similar to the Type 66, doing a burnout. Just based on the look and the four exhausts, we can expect this thing to be powerful. Then we see another sports car, but I can't tell what its name is other than it looks like a Gazooka or something. Well, whatever it is, it's not doing too flash as its engine is literally on fire from taking fire from Sixth Street Gangooners. We also get a look at a customized male V here and reasons why customization is important even if you play first person. We see another modified sports car among the trash and Nomad Street Racers, complete with both a Wraith and Eldercados modified vehicles. We can see economy, heavy duty and sports vehicles here. Keep in mind that some modified vehicles will become a very different, like the Type 66 here. It used to have glass windows, but now it has an interior without windows, mirroring the crystal dome tech only found in high-end cars. Instead of windows, the cameras project what's on the outside where the windows should be, giving you more protection. It has a different interior as well. Look at the detail in this stock interior. It's beautiful. I kind of love that throttle for a gear stick. But then cut to a Nomad modified version and it's completely different inside. Cut to the outside and it's different there too. Cut to a city drive with the Quadra Turbo R and we can see we have a ton of free space within the massive map to drive around and enjoy our fast, hard-earned vehicles. Speaking of fast and hard-earned, we have the Hypercars. These are your top-of-the-range, uber-expensive, only for the top 1% kind of vehicles. These are both durable and fast while being high-tech and stacked with features. These aren't cars you'll be able to easily steal, hotwire or break into. Expect to need high tech skill to do so, if at all, or simply have to earn these through missions. From left to right we have the Rayfield, Caliburn and Erendite, and the Hera Outlaw. Don't expect heavy mods on these beauties as mods will only reduce the output of their top of the range, spare no expense, Neo Kish cars. Neo Kish being the most recent of the four styles, which embodies both style and substance. First up is the Spanish built Hera Outlaw. This one barely scrapes into the hypercar category. It has the standard glass windows, but is packing 755 horsepower, which is more power than the Quadra Type 66 at almost the same weight. But trust me when I say you haven't seen anything yet. We know of white and black paint jobs. Then we have the UK built Rayfield Caliburn. I want, I want you to sit down for this. The car has a horsepower of more than double the Outlaw at 1660, which is almost the same weight as the car itself. It's practically a fighter jet, as it's the most powerful vehicle we know of in the game. It uses Crystal Dome technology to make sure the passenger is safe and has full privacy. In the trailer, we see a few different paint jobs, black, blue, white, and yellow. Then we have the car you try to steal at the start of the Street Kid life path, the Rayfield Erendite. It's the second most powerful car, but still nowhere near the Caliburn at 950 horsepower. It's sleek, luxurious, and like the Caliburn, it uses Crystal Dome technology for safety and privacy. Hop in the car, it's dark. Start her up and where the windows would be, you'll see outside. Would suck if you're driving along and the power cuts out since you'll just be blind, but in a car of this quality that won't happen. 
the different paint jobs we see are black, mahogany, and yellow. So if we go back to the start of the video, this street race is going to be an absolute blowout. The Rayfield Caliburn is on the line. I, I don't know how the Shion or the Type 66 could keep up. Here we get to see the interior of the Caliburn, which looks how you'd expect, expensive and high tech. We also get a look at one of the Rayfield's back seats. Just, just look at the detail, the leather bulging at the seams. What we didn't cover is the types of motorbikes, but perhaps that's something CD Projekt Red will show us in detail in another video. So now you're much more prepared for driving around Night City, and even competing in street races. Just remember to bring your gun, says CD Projekt Red, as Night City is a dangerous place. A final note, once you own a vehicle, you can summon it to your side, like Roach, and it will auto drive up to you. Hopefully it doesn't end up on top of a building. So that's all the information I have for you in this video. What did you think? Have a favorite car so far? Let me know below. Also be sure to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe. I'll be back very soon for an in-depth breakdown you don't want to miss. So until then, ciao.